Hi, how's it going? And it's been over five. Uh, it's been over five years since uh, Microsoft and Sony released the PS4 and Xbox One uh, in late 2013, uh, and they're still charging $300 for their consoles. Uh, this PC you see to see above was put together just recently for uh, half of what a new one would cost, all while playing games just as good or even better uh, in, cer in certain cases. Uh, now, a quick disclaimer, uh, these are used parts I'm using, and if you're comfortable with the risk of buying secondhand components, uh, there's some good value to be had here. Uh, this build took me about a month or so to complete, as there's a lot of waiting around for the right deals to pop up, uh, but if you're patient, uh, I feel like some of these deals can be replicated. Uh, if you want to compare apples to apples, uh, a used PS4 still goes for around $200 used, uh, which still makes us a good value given the added practicality uh, that a computer gives uh, versus a console. So with that out of our way, uh, let's start with the core of our build, or an Intel Core i5-4670 uh, to be specific. Uh, this Haswell chip was uh, released uh, as well back in 2013 and was highly praised for its uh, gaming performance. Uh, being a non-K chip does mean that it can't be overclocked uh, for that extra uh, performance, but with four cores and boost speeds of 3.8 gigahertz, uh, it's more than capable of uh, gaming. And uh, this is probably easily the most powerful component uh, in this list. Uh, now I was able to pick up the processor, motherboard, and RAM uh, in a bundle off offer up for just $60. Uh, it was originally posted for 80, uh, but the listing had been up for about two weeks, and the seller was uh, pretty happy to take my offer after asking him. The uh, the motherboard we have is a very basic H87 Intel desktop board. Uh, they're blue, and there really is nothing special or fancy about these boards. Uh, they were featured in a lot of OEM pre-built computers, making them pretty common and cheap nowadays. Uh, but it'll get the job done. Uh, the RAM that came with the board was two four gigabyte sticks of Kingston. Uh, low profile RAM. It's green, uh, it's basic, and it has, and eight gigabytes is plenty for this budget. Um, and uh, the games are gonna play with it. Now being 2019 and how cheap SSDs have gotten nowadays, uh, I feel like there really is no excuse not to include one. Uh, although in this case, I would suggest to do as I say, uh, not as I do. Um, as the SSD you see above uh, was purchased for 30 bucks a couple months ago, uh, only to find out uh, that it came from a MacBook, uh, and being an Apple product, it uses a proprietary mSATA standard uh, that only works with specific models of MacBooks. So, uh, one $20 adapter later, and I now have spent $50 on a 120 gigabyte SSD. Um, if we have a quick look at Amazon, uh, there's a bunch of 120 gigabyte SSDs that can be had for around 20 bucks at the moment, uh, and I would highly suggest to go new uh, and go down, down that route. Uh, just pick your favorite brand and uh, one with decent reviews and you should be good to go. Uh, an SSD is nice and all for a speedy start into Windows and a few applications, uh, but 120 gigabytes is not gonna cut it for uh, f uh, being a gaming machine. Um, I picked up the Seagate one terabyte uh, hard drive for just $15 on eBay and it should be plenty of, for storing a decent amount of games on this computer. Now driving those games will be the AMD Radeon HD 7870 GHz edition. Uh, released back in 2012, uh, this card featured 2 GB of GDDR5 memory and is based on a 28 nanometer processor. Uh, that was uh, one of the first GPUs released under AMD's uh, GCN uh, architecture or uh, graphics core next. Uh, this was an instruction set that was a major leap forward in technology at the time uh, and is still being used by AMD and their latest graphics cards. Uh, with GCN and uh, support for DirectX 12 and all the latest drivers that uh, AMD releases, uh, this makes this card still very relevant even after seven years uh, that it's been released. Uh, it can still produce some decent gaming performance for the price. Uh, finishing up the build, uh, I was able to pick up the case, a uh, Thermaltake uh, Core V2 and an allied 500 watt uh, power supply together uh, for just 30 bucks. Uh, the case is pretty cool as it's modular uh, and you can change the orientation uh, as it's just a cube and all the panels are uh, all the panels are pretty much interchangeable um, and the power supply it's all right uh, it looks like a rebranded antec unit uh, and it's non-modular or 80 plus certified uh, but it'll run the system uh, and it'll it, it'll get the job done so with specs out of the way can it run crisis 
um, at 1080p medium settings? Yeah, it can. Uh, I was able, I was seeing an average of uh, 46 FPS in the first hour of gameplay, with just 40 and 34 FPS for the 1% and 0.1% lows. Uh, even though this game is almost 12 years old, it still takes a lot to push t uh, to get to that 60 FPS uh, 1080p mark. And uh, given how well those numbers are, uh, this was still a very smooth experience with uh, very minimal stuttering uh, during gameplay, shown by those 1% and 0.1% lows. Uh, the next game I tested is uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Uh, I recently picked this title up for the Zombies experience, and uh, because it's it's dirt cheap, you can find it. You can find uh, codes online for like eight bucks for this game. Uh, now, being a game highly optimized for consoles, uh, it should come at no surprise that this. Uh, this machine can play it, uh, but I wasn't expecting how well it would perform. Uh, at 1080p with all the with all the settings turned up, uh, we were seeing an average of 76 FPS with 57 and 54 FPS uh, for the 1% and 0.1% lows. Uh, this was an extremely smooth and enjoyable experience uh, that can pretty much rival or even beat uh, what you can find on consoles, and I was pretty surprised of how well the results came for this game. Um, and same with Apex Legends, actually. Being the newest title here, uh, this shows how well thought out uh, the GCN architecture was, uh, because at 1080p medium settings, uh, this system can still produce some uh, pretty respectable numbers. After taking the average of 5 games I played, I was seeing an average of 68 FPS, uh, with 31 and 28 uh, FPS for the 1% and 0.1% lows. Uh, now the last game I'm testing here is The Witcher 3. Uh, being one of the best looking games from 2015, uh, it managed an average of just 40 FPS with uh, 34 and 28 FPS respectively for the 1% and 0.1% lows uh, at 1080p medium settings. Um, this performed really well, um, and I was actually expecting to see these results, uh, as the console version of the game is capped at 30 FPS, uh, and I think the PS4 runs at 1080p and the Xbox One runs at 900p. Uh, so we're actually seeing better results than their than the console counterparts um, And given how uh, how cinematic this game can be uh, we could cap it at 30 FPS and sort of replicate that console experience um, or we can turn down some settings and uh, Maybe the resolution try to aim for that 60 FPS mark uh, the choice and flexibility of how you play your games is the beauty of playing on a, a PC versus a console um, that's really going to be one of the major differences uh, when deciding, when choosing which platform to, to play on. So, there she is. Uh, I was pretty impressed with the results and the performance that this machine can still offer, uh, given how, some, how old some of the components are. Uh, after adding everything up, uh, the total came out to be $155, uh, and I think that provides tremendous value given the performance. Um, I understand not everyone might not have the best market used market to work with, but I feel like with some time and um, patience, uh, this can be replicated. And I hope this is helpful to somebody. Please leave any feedback in the comments. We'd we'll love to hear what you guys want, uh, have to say about this $150 build. Uh, and thanks if you made it this far. Hope you guys have a good one. Bye.